Welcome to Graduate Spotlight, a presentation of College Success Arizona. This program features the hardworking college graduates who have earned scholarships from College Success Arizona and are now in the workforce or continuing with their education. Today on Graduate Spotlight, we interview Trey Begay. I was actually born in Salt Lake City, Utah. And you were raised where? The Navajo Reservation, most of elementary, and then moved to the city, uh, the border town, they call it, to the Navajo Reservation of Flagstaff, Arizona. I finished at middle school and high school there. And where did you graduate high school? I graduated uh, at Flagstaff High School. And how old are you currently? I am currently 23 years old. And can you tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up in northern Arizona? I think it was it was great. I mean, I think my family relocating to you know to the city actually gave me a better opportunity to you know for my education. There was a lot more programs available to me. Um, and a lot more support um, as far as education, and I was able to do a dual enrollment program in um, my junior and senior year in high school, and I was able to attend the local community college, Coconino Community College, um, and that's where I got my actual first um, experience of wanting to go into medicine. I did the um, medical assisting program, and they exposed me to like clin the clinical setting early early on, just interacting with patients, doing um, vitals, getting you know patient in information, and just seeing the the clinical, you know how the clinic operates. Um, that, that really opened the doors for me to to pursue medicine. And you attended the University of Northern Arizona. Is that correct? Uh, no, I actually attended um, after high school. I went to Arizona State University and I studied um, health sciences. That's what I majored in, and which was the pre-medicine track there. Um, and so I ended up getting my bachelor of science degree, 2015. And right now you're attending medical school. We talked a little bit before the interview in a very cold place. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm out in Grand Forks, North Dakota, um, and. How did I end up here? Uh, they actually have a um, program called Indians into Medicine um, that I was that was made aware to me, and I've always been uh, interested. or always needed that support, um, you know, especially for Native Americans. Um, I got that at Arizona State University through American Indian Student Support Services. Um, I got the same help in high school um, through. Uh, NAU's program called uh, Educational Talent Search. Um, so again, I they always provide that support, and then I could, could get the same thing from here at University of North Dakota Indians into Medicine. Um, and I applied here, got in, and so I'm, I'm here now. And talk about that's a, a huge transition. You're in graduate school in a very different place climatically and geographically from Arizona. The coldest temperatures in the, the continental United States are recorded annually within probably 100 miles of where you are. Can you talk about that transition? Oh, yeah. I mean, even just, just traveling, um, having to buy a, a nice winter coat that would at least last me, you know, the next four years I'll be here for school, um, so just, just that extra expense and even, you know, just driving, um, having to worry about transportation, even though Grand Forks is a small town, um, even, you know, when it snows and sometimes they don't plow the, the roads in time and we still got to be at, or we still have to be at lectures in the morning, so just trying to be able to, you know, drive through that weather, um, get winter tires, um, you know, get the car ready for winter, just simple things like that. Uh, had to, had to transition with that type of, um, you know, from that type of weather to prepare for it. And you might have said this already. Are you at uh, UND or NDSU? I'm at UND. And med school, by all accounts, is very, very tough. What is your experience so far? Uh, I've had my struggles. Um, again, you know, just that first, we go by block. So we do eight weeks of courses, and then we test on the ninth week. Um, so there's four blocks this year, and I'm about to start block four, eight more weeks, and then we test and we'll be ready for, um, we'll be out for summer. But I think, you know, my first block was just really getting, you know, getting it down, like what what are we going to be tested on, what are things to, you know, to study for, because we're just bombarded with so much information every week, um, and we're accountable for all that information, we're going to be tested on it. 
So you really just have to study everything and be well-rounded. And just like, you know, just what they, just even like the test questions, it's everything's like applied, everything's clinically relevant now. So it's not just reciting, you know, our textbook, it's actually applying it to a patient case, uh, applying it to uh, different, you know, diagnoses and what we'll see in the clinic. So adjusting to that type of, you know, learning and that type of thinking, um, that took some time. And I, I think I've got it down by now, just reaching out to professors, talking with um, second year medical students and um, even just working with my classmates and my cohort, you know, we study together and just getting that all down and, and helping each other out. I think that's what really helped me is reaching out and get, asking for help. So it's been it's been tough, but I think, you know, if you use your resources within the school, everybody's willing to help. Ultimately, what are your career goals and plans? So right now um, I plan to go back to the Navajo Reservation and, you know, work for Indian Health Services. Um, and that's something that I've, that's a health care that I grew up with and I still utilize today. You know, just giving back to my community is really my goal. Um, so I hope to specialize in family medicine. And can you tell us what are the biggest challenges you've overcome thus far in life? Getting through undergrad, um, finishing that with, you know, no, well, no debt to worry about. And thanks to college success and also my tribe and other um, scholarships that I received, um, I was able to do that. And that, that's really helpful coming in, you know, to medical school because, um, again, just now there's the cost just, you know, went up by a lot more. And now I, now I have to take out even more loans. Now I have to actually take out loans to, to fund my schooling. So just, you know, not even having to worry about undergrad um, loans coming back at me. Um, I can just, you know, start fresh. I like to think of it here in med school, with, you know, fresh without having any loans. So that was a big challenge for me, um, especially being first generation college student, um, being able to, you know, find mentors to to get me where I am today. Um, Cause uh, you know, my parents can't help me in that aspect or even my family. So just reaching out for help and, and having people to talk to about my experiences and having them suggest different um, opportunities for me to, to get where I, to get, have me got where I am today. And you mentioned the scholarship from College Success Arizona, which provides up to $6,000 per year for educational expenses and also a success advisor who helps guide you through your undergraduate degree. When did you first learn about College Success Arizona? Um, I learned about it in, I was part of the NAU's educational talent search. And they, you know, reached out to me and um, I joined their program and they they had a presentation uh, that College Success came out and did at NAU and a group of us in that program came and listened to the, you know, the opportunity and I applied. I was encouraged to apply, so I did. And that's, you know, I received it and it was great. And how have the success advisors at College Success impacted your college experience? So I had uh, two different advisors um, for the first, I think, year and a half, my freshman year and some of my sophomore year, I met with um, Angie Delgadillo and she was really awesome and just coming in, she met with me at least once a month. Um, she came in and we just, I, I was able to talk to her about my experience and um, she was able, offered to, uh, able to offer me different suggestions as far as like finding um, jobs, um, reaching out for different help around campus. Um, and they did connect us with some students some upperclassmen on campus, um, just being able to talk with them about their experience and, you know, like what kind of, I guess, advice they would offer. And then I also, for the remainder of my undergrad, I met with um, Kayla, Kayla Polstein, and she was awesome. Um, actually, she ended up um, leading College Success, and um, she, I was still able to different but she went she moved to uh, I think Phoenix um, Native Center and I was able to present to some of the students that she worked with some high school students just reaching out to them and um, I guess getting them pumped up for uh, to, to go into to undergrad because they're ready to graduate just things like that and just again just having someone to talk to is really great and to share their experiences 
because I didn't have really have the opportunity with my family. So that was really a big thing for me with the advisors. And you talk about your family a lot. Have they always been encouraging you to attend college? Yeah, that's that's really where I got, you know, my my first, you know, that was something that was taught to me and my siblings is really the importance of education and, you know, how that would that would get us, get me places and just having a better a life in general and just to pursue that. So that was really pushed on us. And I really um, internalized that about, internalized that teaching of them and, just stayed with education, and I still think utilize that today. Like they're teaching of how important education can be. Because, like even my dad always said, you know, this you don't want to be, you know, I want you to be better than I am. I want you to, um, you know, not live paycheck to paycheck. And the only way to do that is, is through education. What advice can you offer for middle and high school students back on the Navajo Reservation or in northern Arizona who may be listening to this and who may be considering their own college experience and options? I think just, you know, what really was impactful for me was those programs um, such as Educational Talent Search. Uh, I believe they do have that on the Nav- Navajo Reservation. Um, just getting involved with that. And uh, and that's that program is really just for college prep for students who are interested in, you know, going to college. Um, it, it's a really great program to do. Just get involved um, and find your interests early. I know, like, I didn't, if I hadn't found medicine early and haven't did those programs, um, I probably wouldn't have been as prepared as I was today. So it's really, you know, to start early and find what you're most passionate about and, and go from there and talk to people in the field and really just get involved. Um, and that's even to this day, I'm still involved with different programs and, you know, they help get you to the next level and, and definitely finding mentors, someone that can tell you, you know, go for it, someone that can help you and, and edit your essays that can, you know, refer you to different summer programs. I think that'd be my advice. Has your college experience changed you in some way? Do you feel more confident than you did maybe leaving high school? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I think that dual enrollment program really prepared me for that, you know, taking those college level courses in high school, especially when I got to, you know, the big college, the big university, Arizona State, um, just still getting, I went from a class size of like 15 students per instructor to the big chemistry biology courses where it's like a, you know, a theater size class of 200 students. I think just transitioning from that to the bigger classroom and just understanding, you know, how, what the expectations, you know, of what the school expects of you in that college level course. I think I already understood that leaving leaving high school, and that really helped me transition. You mentioned earlier that College Success Arizona has helped you limit student debt, to, thanks in part to the scholarship. Can you explain? Yeah, so they provided six thousand you know dollars um, per year, um, and that was a big you know chunk of of you know they do, they provide that for four years, so that's a big you know sum of money that really just you don't have to really worry about that. And that paid for my tuition. Um, and then I also got a few other scholarships that, you know, paid for the rest. So that was a big contribution from them. And to stick, stick it with me for the four years, especially with advising, was helpful as well. And who had the most impact on you in your childhood? My childhood? Uh, let's see. I'd have to say my parents, both of my parents. Them teaching me how important education was, um, and my mother did actually, she has her associate's degree from the local uh, tribal college, um, but she, she never pursued anything further than that. But, you know, my understanding is, I mean, as far as, I don't know, the, I guess the definition I've always heard was first-generation students are, um, you know, parents with a bachelor's degree or parents who don't have a bachelor's degree. Um, but she, you know, even just her, like, I mean, when I was younger, she would attend the classes at the tribal college on the Navajo Reservation and just going to classes with, she would bring me to her classes, um, and just, you know, being immersed in that type of environment. And even, you know, my father, he, he was a construction worker and, you know, he worked hard every day and he's the one who, you know, taught me the value of education as well because he, he actually didn't finish um, high school. And so he knew... He knew how important that was, and so 
just seeing them work hard and to provide for us is kind of that work ethic kind of, you know, I took that and I use that even now today. When do you expect to graduate from med school? Um, in 2020, class and, of 2020. So. And so your graduation will be followed by a residency somewhere? Yeah. So that, if it's, um, you know, if I just decide to go into family medicine, it can be three to four years of residency. And where would you hope to do that? Hopefully, you know, somewhere in the four corner states, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, or back in Arizona. Thank you, Trey, for the interview and for working so hard to make a difference in our community.